Lawmakers in the Red Chamber are calling for a probe of security agencies over travel ban violation. The motion was raised by Senator Ike Kuremadu, who expressed worry over the numerous reports and trending videos on the flagrant breach of the curfew and ban on interstate travel, alleging complicity with security agents. President Muhammad Buhari on Tuesday sent 42 names nominated as career diplomats to the Senate for confirmation as ambassadors. It is my hope that the His Senate letter was read by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan at the start of the plenary on Tuesday. In accordance to section 171, subsections 2, 1, 2C, and subsection 4 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, I have the honor to forward for confirmation by the Senate the underlisted 42 names of nominees as career ambassadors designate. Copies of their curriculum vitae are attached herewith. It is my hope that this request will receive the usual expeditious consideration of the Senate. Meanwhile, following adjustments across various aspects of life due to what is fast becoming the new normal due to the COVID-19 pandemic, a bill to legalize virtual court proceedings was introduced in the Senate. The constitutional alteration bill sponsored by Senator Michael Bamidele seeks to give legal support to virtual court proceedings. With about 40 million Nigerians. Also at the Senate on Tuesday, a bill to prevent, control and manage sickle cell anemia in Nigeria scaled second reading. One of the provisions of the bill seeks to prevent persons who are carriers of the diseased gene from marrying other carriers. According to the sponsor of the bill, Senator Sam Egu, it will curb preventable massive debt and avoidable hardships caused by the disease. It will enable the Minister of Health to direct, coordinate and supervise the prevention, control and management of the disease by performing the functions outlined in Section 3 of the bill. It will also empower the Ministry to accredit reputable public and private hospitals and medical clinics across the country, including the rural areas, to function as accredited participants in the prevention, control and management of the disease in Nigeria. Meanwhile, the Senate has urged the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, and the Commandant General of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Abdullahi Mohamedou, to investigate the alleged complicity of security officers in the breach of the curfew and ban on non-essential interstate travels and bring to book anyone found wanting. Further away, the Nigerian Governors Forum has equally raised serious concern over the way Nigerians crisscross the country in their numbers despite the subsisting order to the contrary. Conscious of the very grave implication of the brazen breach of the presidential order restricting interstate movements, equally conscious of the fact that the nation's security agencies, particularly the police, have the responsibility to enforce law and order including the presidential ban on interstate movement. Very worried about the report of alleged complicity in the same breaches by those who are supposed to enforce compliance with the directives of the president, commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Accordingly, I urge this court, this uh, Senate, to condemn in strong terms the bare first breach of the presidential order on interstate movements. President Buhari also sent a request to the Senate replacing a late nominee, Tobias Chukwemeka, whom he had erroneously included among the 37 names he sent to the Senate on the 28th of April for confirmation as members of the Board of the Federal Character Commission. Now let's move on to other activities of federal lawmakers outside the chambers. As reactions continue to trail the Infectious Diseases Bill in the House of Representatives, the Speaker of the Lower Chamber, who is one of the sponsors of the bill, met with members of the civil society organizations who will play a huge role during the public hearing of the bill. He assured that the process would be carefully carried out, considering the importance of the bill and the many controversies it has generated. The it has generated a lot of, um, a lot of uh, interest, a lot of... Uh, if you like to if you want to use the word controversy, uh, a lot of that, a lot of the interest, a lot of the comments were genuine. A lot of the comments were based on genuine feelings of how people felt. 
some of it not, some of it political, some of it uh, based, on, based on a misunderstanding of the law. Uh, but but, but, but uh, quite a number raised some genuine issues. Uh, and we're not one to shy away when genuine issues are, are raised. You, know, you ignore the noise when noise is being made. That's the only way you can do your work. But when, you, when, when there are issues that are raised, you sift those issues from the noise and you address those issues. And that's why we've sent it to public hearing. Mr. Bajabi Amila also spoke on the federal government's palliatives for vulnerable Nigerians and the legislative agenda of a lower chamber, which he said would be restructured to reflect the realities of the COVID-19 pandemic. The idea of what we're trying to do, and I'm sure in the next two weeks that will come up as well, we're working seriously on it, on the codification of uh, the, uh, the uh, NSIP, uh, Social Intervention Program of Government. You know now it's not in any code at form. It's not a it's not a law. Uh, it's more or less a policy subject to the whims and caprices of anybody. Uh, so what we're trying to do because so you have the same program, similar programs in other countries in America, in Germany, in England, but they're codified so that it's not subject to anybody's uh, uh, desire or how he wants to distribute. It's written, it's embedded and baked into the law that is made for that purpose. You know, the statistics, how you derive, how you come to uh, who's, who's the poorest, who's the most vulnerable, how you distribute the format you use, all those things will be in the law, I'm sure, the next two weeks. Meanwhile, following the financial allegations that have continued to trail the Niger Delta Development Commission, a lawmaker from that region is questioning the method of sharing of palliatives by the commission. When a situation like this, you don't understand exactly what is happening. I can say it because I am from an affected area. I represent Kanago Kana Federal Constituency. I have 36 wards and over 160 villages. I'm not aware that one of those their palliatives got into my constituency. Now, you talk about the roads, you talk about the, the so called health facilities and all that. What exactly are they doing? This is a period when agencies and commissions like this should be able to deal directly with the people and remove this toga of politics. If you are doing, if you are trying to do a sustainable program that will reach out to the ordinary persons, there are channels you must go through. The House of Representatives Committee, which is investigating the validity of immigration documents of every Chinese person in Nigeria and the expatriate quota of all the Chinese businesses in the country, held its inaugural meeting on Tuesday. An expatriate into the committee is to ascertain the number of illegal and undocumented Chinese immigrants in Nigeria and to repatriate them to China. This is some sort of reaction to the treatment of Nigerians in China by the Chinese government. There is a bill before the House which passed the first reading today and hopefully will come up for second reading next week Tuesday. That bill expands the scope of local content from the oil and gas sector to every critical sector in the economy. The speaker is the sponsor, I'm a co-sponsor, and there are six other sponsors cutting across the six geopolitical zones. One critical area in that bill is that before anybody gets an expatriate into Nigeria for a particular service, the person or the company has to advertise for that position that you seek to invite an expatriate. You do that advert for two weeks in all the national dailies. Two weeks after that, if no Nigerian is qualified to fill that position, then you can now apply to the local content department of the MDA or the sector where you want to get that expatriate from. Upon approval, then you now apply to the immigrations to grant you that expatriate quota. 
That's it on the gavel. Send us an email to thegavel at channelstv.com. I am Terry Ikumi. Bye.